the DJI Mavic 3 Thermal versus the M30T. Which one is right for you? I've been using these drones for over a year now. We're gonna help you decide which one you should choose. Don't go anywhere. Hey everybody, David here from Aerial Influence. Thank you so much for stopping by. You know, over the last year or so, I have had the privilege of using two drones specifically quite a bit. Now that is the DJI Mavic 3 Thermal and the DJI M30T. Both of these are thermal drones. Both of these have pluses and minuses. Like I said, I've been using them for quite a while now, so we are gonna talk all about it and help you try to figure out which drone is right for you. First, who am I? My name's David. I work for a company called Aerial Influence. I actually am one of the owners of the company. We sell these drones, so if you're interested, reach out to us, numbers on the screen and in the description below. So let's face these drones off and see what some of the pluses and the minuses are. First up, I wanna get right into it. The important thing that you're all wanting to know, we're gonna talk about pricing. The Mavic 3 Thermal comes with the drone, smart controller, one battery, a hard case, and you get a year of DJI Enterprise. So that's great, that's coming in at around $5,500. Once you add a battery kit, which will give you an additional three batteries and a multi-charger, you're looking at around $6,200 before tax uh, and shipping. So really good price for a thermal drone, that's great, and you're gonna see everything that it has to offer as we continue to talk. Now, the M30T comes in a little pricier. It's actually had a recent like $4,000 price cut, but it is starting at $89.79. Now that price includes the drone, smart controller, hard case, some extra props, and a year of DJI Care Enterprise, which is a very important thing, DJI Care Enterprise. Uh, it's a great thing if you are flying your drone because it covers you for two wrecks per year. So really, really great that both of these drones come with DJI Enterprise Care. So you get all of that for the price of $89.79, but you don't get any batteries. So you, once you start adding batteries to it, you're gonna want more than one set. Uh, you know, you're gonna look at ten to $12,000, uh, depending on what you get. There are also additional add-ons for both of these drones, we'll talk about those in a little bit. That will jack the price up a little bit as well. Speaking of those extra batteries you're gonna to have to buy, both of these drones have good flight times. The Mavic 3 Thermal is coming in at a 45 minute flight time. Now that is in perfect conditions. You're really probably gonna get closer to like 37 minutes, uh, depending on what the conditions are, what the wind is, etc. The M30T, even though it has two batteries, it's got a little bit less flight time, but just a couple of minutes. Uh, it's coming in at 41 minutes, so you're looking closer at 35 probably, depending on the conditions. But regardless, both of these drones have great flight time. If you cycle through the batteries properly, if you've got enough batteries, you can continuously fly for a long, long time. You can also hot swap the batteries on the M30T. So you can land the drone, take one battery out, put a new one in, take another battery out, put a new one in, and you are back up in the air. You never have to turn the drone off. Uh, so that's gonna save you a little bit of time there. The Mavic 3 Thermal does not have hot swapping. It only has the one battery. So you're gonna have to land, turn the drone off, put a new battery in, turn the drone on, and then you take off again. So it is gonna add a little bit of time to your operation. So keep that in mind. Those hot swappable batteries on the M30T are a great feature. Let's talk about operating temperatures. Both of them are pretty impressive. The Mavic 3 Thermal goes from 14 degrees Fahrenheit up to 104 degrees Fahrenheit. So it is safe to operate the drone within those ranges. Probably safe to operate above, above or below that as well, but stick with the manufacturer's recommendations on this. The M30T comes at negative four degrees all the way up to 122 degrees. So it's gonna do a little better in the temperatures. The M30T really is kind of a workhorse and it's gonna do good in wind, rain, or snow. And I'm gonna talk more about that in just a little bit. Both of these drones are quickly to deployable and very, very portable. So you can get both of these drones out of the box and up in the air in less than a minute. So that is considering getting the drone out of the box, unfolding the arms, powering it on, waiting for everything to boot up. You can do all of that in less than a minute. The Mavic 3 Thermal has a much smaller body than the M30T does. So it is gonna be quite a bit more portable. The box is a lot smaller. Uh, both of them are very portable, don't get me wrong, but the Mavic is obviously gonna be a lot lighter and smaller, so probably a little more portable. These both have high resolution 640 by 512 thermal sensors on them. So you're literally going to be able to pick up a heat signature from up at 400 feet while you're flying through a field looking for somebody or you are in deer recovery and you're trying to find a deer. This is the feature that you're going to really want that high resolution thermal on it. The thermal camera on both of these drones is pretty equal. They're both radio metric. You can actually draw a box on the screen of either one of these. It's going to show you the hottest and the coldest temperature within that little box. So that's a really cool feature on both 
both of these. And while the specs on the M30T might be a little bit better, I think for the untrained eye, for anybody that is just using this for search and rescue, I don't think you're gonna be able to tell a difference whatsoever. If you're, I guess, one of those people that likes to pixel peep and really dig in there to see what it looks like, uh, maybe the M30T would be right for you. The other great feature about the thermal is you can actually change the palette. So you could say white hot, uh, which means everything that is on the screen that is hot is gonna be white, or you could do black hot, which is the opposite. Everything on the screen that is hot is gonna be black. And there are several other options to choose from. It's really whatever is gonna work for your eye. So the thermal on both of these is really fantastic. Like I said, I don't think anybody's gonna be able to tell the difference between either one of them, so you can't go wrong. The zoom ranges on both of these drones are pretty incredible. The Mavic 3 thermal has a 56 times hybrid zoom. So a lot of that is gonna be digital, very little optical. 56 times is what you're gonna get. So the further you zoom in, the more digitized that picture is gonna get. I'm showing you an example on the screen right now. Uh, but you'll see the further you zoom, the worse the picture is gonna get. But it still is a great zoom range and you can see what you need to see from a long way away, which is the whole goal. Now, the M30T has a 16 times optical zoom, which means it is not gonna degrade. It's actually using the glass on the camera to zoom in and out. So you're not going to degrade your image when you zoom in up to 16 times. When it gets past 16 times, it'll go all the way up to 200 times with the digital zoom. So again, when you get up to 200 times digital, the, the zoom is amazing because you can zoom that far away, but the image is really going to start to degrade. So you've got two great options here with the zoom range. Obviously, the M30T takes the cake on this one with that 200 times digital zoom, but also it's really nice to have that 16 times optical zoom if you're trying to capture any photos or video that need a little bit higher quality. These both have wide angle cameras on them as well. Really what you're using the wide angle camera for is to get like situational awareness, something like that, or you're using it to, to do mapping, which I'm gonna talk about in just a little bit. But both of them have nice high resolution cameras on them for stills. Uh, they both shoot 4K video as well. You can actually do a really cool thing using DJI Pilot, which is the app that you use with both of the smart controllers for both of these drones. But you can do what's called a split screen. So you can have thermal on one, one side you can have regular color video on the other side and you can link them so they'll zoom together so we've got a lot of public safety that use this feature quite a bit it is very helpful for them to be able to see what's going on both in the color world and in the thermal world so split screen is a great feature for both of these drones the Mavic 3T has a smaller remote with very few buttons it's got a smaller screen on it as well but it is very very bright it's got an HDI mini port on it so if you've got the right cable you can hook it up to like a big screen TV something like that so so people can actually see what you're seeing without looking over your shoulder the whole time. The remote for the M30T is something to behold. It is just a beast big and beefy you want to have a lanyard with it for sure and it's got lots of physical buttons that you can program make them do different things you want to do remap those buttons so a lot of different options with both of these remote but the m30t remote to me is hands down the winner here uh, it is really just like i said it's a beast and it's got weatherproofing as well but the m30t you can stand outside and be flying in rain or snow and you're not going to have to worry about that remote getting wet dual controllers this can be a really great feature but not on the mavic 3t you can only only use one remote for that drone so the dual controllers is out the door uh, for the Mavic 3T. The M30T, you can use two remotes. Now, how would you use two remotes? Well, one way you'd use them is to have one pilot who is just flying the drone. They are using an FPV camera, which is on the front of the M30T. So that camera, the FPV camera is stationary. It doesn't move up or down. You can't really control it. It is just so you can see what is straight ahead of you. So the pilot of the drone would use that camera to fly. They wouldn't be using the gimbaled camera below. The other person that has the remote they would be the camera person. They would be the ones controlling the up and down movements or the side to side movements of the drone, as well as switching the camera from like thermal over to the zoom camera, that kind of thing. So that is one way you would use dual controllers. Another way you could use them is by doing what's called a handoff. So say one pilot, is here, I'm flying my drone. The other pilot is two miles away. We're in communication with one another. I let him know that the drone is going far away from me. It's getting close to him. He keeps an eye in the sky. As soon as he has it within his visible line of sight, he can then take control of the drone completely. So that's a great feature if you're trying to cover a lot of ground. It's just a great way to extend your mission. So again, dual controllers available on the M30T, not available on the Mavic 3T. Laser rangefinder, can you believe they're putting laser rangefinders on drones now. Well, they're not putting it on the Mavic 3T. They did put a laser rangefinder on the M30T. What you can do with that laser rangefinder is you point your camera at a certain location. It's going to tell you the exact 
distance that location is from the drone. It's gonna give you the GPS coordinates, the lat longitude. It could tell you like the height of a building, of a structure. So all kinds of information you can get from that laser rangefinder available on the M30T, not available on the Mavic 3T. Are these drones capable of RTK? Well, first of all, what is RTK? It stands for real-time kinematics. What we always say is it is basically GPS on steroids. It's gonna keep your drone ultra stable. It's gonna keep it on its path. And when you return to home, it's gonna land exactly where you took off from. It also is gonna help you in like city environments. When you've got a lot of interference around you, when there are a lot of obstacles in the way, RTK can be a great tool to keep your drone stable in that kind of an environment. So the Mavic 3T is capable of RTK, but you gotta buy an additional little top hat it's in the 700 and something dollar range but once you add that it is capable of rtk now the m30t has rtk already built into it so those antenna are already on the drone for both of these rtk doesn't just work by itself so just having the top hat and just having the antenna on the m30t that doesn't give you rtk you still need either a base station which you can buy that's around four thousand dollars you need an rtk base station to be able to communicate with the satellites and the drone and everything else or you need access to an n-trip network which essentially is rtk broadcast some states have free rtk broadcast networks others you have to pay for, but an N-TRIP network or an RTK base station is gonna be necessary if you wanna fly with RTK. So a really great tool. A lot of people don't know anything about RTK, but if you're looking for super stable flights, super accurate maps, RTK is the way you wanna go. Speaking of mapping, both of these drones are capable of mapping with the DJI Pilot 2 app. It is super easy. You literally go in, you draw a box of the area that you want to map, you set your altitude, and then the app sets up your flight path. It's gonna schedule all the pictures that need to be taken to create your map, whether that's ortho mosaic or just a, a flat 2D map. You're gonna upload that mission to the drone and the drone is gonna fly it completely by itself. When it's finished, it's gonna come and land right back at home. You're gonna take those files, you're gonna upload them to something like Pix4D or DJI Terra, and those programs will then build your maps. So both of these drones are fully capable of creating maps. Okay, attachments. I told you a little bit ago about the RTK attachment that'll go on top of the DJI Mavic 3 Thermal. Well, there's also a spotlight you can put on top of there. There is a loudspeaker, and they will continue to come out with other things to put on top of this drone. It's just got a USB-C port on top of it. You screw the attachment in and you're ready to go. The M30T also has a place for attachments on top of it. It has a speaker and a spotlight combo. It's got a full-on floodlight. It's got a parachute. And again, they're just gonna continue to come out with more things that you can attach to it. So both of these drones have their attachments just depending on what you need uh, is gonna determine the price that you're gonna end up paying for this drone. Both of these drones have 360 degree obstacle avoidance. They have sensors on top. They have sensors on the bottom. They have sensors in the front. They have sensors in the back. They have them on the sides as well. So you will be protected with the obstacle avoidance on these drones. Now I'm not saying you're gonna be fully protected. If you go flying by a tree that doesn't have any leaves on it, that's gonna be a problem. If you go flying by power lines, that is gonna be a big problem. So be smart, use the obstacle avoidance only when you need to. Stay away from structures, stay away from trees. Uh, use that zoom range on those drones to see what you need to see without flying too close. Weather resistance, this is where the M30T really shines. You can fly it in rain or snow. I've done it, I'm showing you a video of flying in a pretty good rainstorm and the drone held up beautifully. There were no issues afterwards. Now I did dry it off really well. I let it sit, I put a fan by it because just to make sure everything was dried out, I didn't want anything to get into any of the ports. Another thing, if you're gonna have like an attachment on top of the M30T, T, it is not weatherproof anymore. So don't fly in rain or snow uh, if you've got an attachment like the speaker spotlight on top because it does take away that IP rating if you do that. Unfortunately, the Mavic 3T has no weather rating. You do not want to fly this thing in rain or snow. I know there are people out there that are going to say, well, I've done it. I've flown it in some rain. I've flown it in snow. Just don't, don't risk it. If it looks like it's gonna rain, just keep that drone out of the sky. You don't wanna risk messing up your $6,000 drone. The transmission range on both of these drones is really remarkable. I think the Mavic 3T is something like nine miles. The M30T is 12 miles. You will never get that kind of range and really you can't anyway because that would be way outside of your line of sight. I have not had transmission issues. I have not had complaints of transmission issues from any clients. We've not had any problems. So the transmission range on both of these is very good. And I don't think you're gonna have many problems, especially if you're just flying within your line of sight, 
you got no issues. Okay, the last feature I want to mention is object tracking. Now the M30T does something called object tracking where you can actually like click on a car or click on a person and the drone will track it for miles and miles. The drone doesn't move itself. It just uses that 200 times zoom range to continually follow that car or that person. So you're gonna wanna fly really high when you're using it for the most part so that the, the car that you're following doesn't go behind a tree or a building. You're gonna wanna clear those objects before you use it. Otherwise you will lose the tracking in, in that situation. So. Object tracking is great and it is not included on the Mavic 3T. All right, so I've gone through a whole bunch of categories on these drones, so what do you think? Which drone is right for you? Are you looking for something a little more affordable like in the $6,200 range with the Mavic 3 thermal? Or are you looking for something closer to like ten dollars to $12,000 with the M30T? The biggest thing the M30T has going for it is the weather rating. It really is a great thing to have that you don't have to worry about a rainstorm starting. You don't have to worry about a snowstorm, uh, you can just fly your drone. Now, I'm not saying to go out and fly it in a torrential downpour where you can't even see from your camera, but if it's raining and it's a steady rain, you're not going to have any issues. So that's really one of the biggest pluses. The other big plus is that huge zoom range. Really like that as well. The Mavic 3T has its pluses as well, though. Just being small, being super, super portable. Uh, it's a great starter drone for a small police department, small fire department, or if you're somebody that is going to do inspection work and you're just getting started with a thermal drone, the Mavic 3 Thermal is a great one for you. What I always say to people is really think about this because the last thing you want to do is get the Mavic 3 Thermal and then realize you need a couple of the features that the M30T has and now you don't have it. Or you don't want to do the opposite. You don't want to overspend and get the M30T and then realize all you needed was the Mavic 3T all along. So a hard decision to make, I know, but if you've got the budget, you've, you've got a big decision to make. I'm sure I missed some things too. I'm sure that there are other features that I've worked with that I've just forgotten about completely. But like I said, over the last year, I've used both of these drones a lot. I've demoed both of these drones for dozens of police and fire departments, and both of them are very solid. Like I said, if you've got the money to spend personally, I'm going for the M30T. If you don't have that in your budget, go for the Mavic 3T. That's gonna get you started in the high resolution thermal world. I hope this was helpful. If you guys are interested in buying one of these drones, make sure you reach out to us. You can see the information on the screen or in the description below. So make sure you give us a call. Be happy to talk to you about any drone you'd like. And if you don't mind, hit the like and subscribe button. We work really hard on these videos and we appreciate the followers. So thank you so much. We'll see you next time.